Hi. <laughs> Welcome to my, pic my Pikachu, I always kept calling it that. So, hi, my name is Melissa Christofiak. I'm here to talk to you about my, my design journey. So, what is design? I had a big problem growing up with figuring what that is, but now that I've found it, I've made it my career, it's my passion, and as you can see, my name's in a pylon, so this presentation will be a positive one. So, when I was little, I wanted to be a marine biologist. I was obsessed with the Titanic, and I wanted to explore the ocean with Robert Ballard, go in submarines with Jacques Cousteau, and then found out that's not what a marine biologist does. And Alberta doesn't need deep sea oceanographers, so then plan B, what else could I do? So then my aunt gave me a subscription to Martha Stewart Living, and in these pages was just like, wow, what is this? How do I do this? How do I, what, what am I attracted about this? So I was like, okay, I think it's design. So going to a school, I had to figure out, did I want to do interior design? My parents were pushing for architecture. Did I want to do industrial design, which my grandma thought was designing factories? So I was like, nope, okay. So industrial design furniture at the U of A was my next step. So got into school and I built furniture on Fridays, which was super fun. And I had the passion and I loved it, but I didn't have the hands or the patience for it. So I'm the one that made curved tables and put rocks on it, just cause. So new plan, not be industrial designer. So I loved movies growing up and I was more interested in like the behind the scenes features than the actual film. So I thought, could I design film? The answer was yes. So I drove down to Los Angeles, my parents and my sister, and I got into the American Film Institute, which is a pretty she-she film school. They only accept 12 kids around the world for my design program. And my, one of my mentors was Robert um, Boyle, I think his last name is, I forget. Um, he was really great, but he was Alfred Hitchcock's production designer, so he designed the birds, and he was holding an Oscar back there, which they're super heavy. So graduated from AFI, um, Clint Eastwood was our commencement speaker. Film school was amazing. I learned the industry in Hollywood, and it was very tough to crack. So my first job was on Spider-Man 4, which sadly never saw the light of day because of script rewrites. But I hustled to get into that studio. I was eager to learn. I, my job interview was me running across the street, running an errand with the coordinator, showing her my portfolio book. Like, you like? Yeah? Like, hire me. So um, after that, I made it into the big movies of Transformers 3, which we nicknamed Tranny 3, and Michael Bay hated that name. So we, I was part of the team that did set dressing, and I did graphic designs for the binders. And we had a, tur like a transformer smash through and break all of our stuff that it took nine days to prep. That's fine. It was great. So um, that was really fun. This is just like a behind the scenes shot from that film. This set was on a gimbal, which the whole stage goes 90 degrees. So we had like massive safety meetings hourly. So if you weren't allowed on set, you were not allowed on set because it would tilt. So. So that was the big world of really intense films, and then my next job was on TV, on Glee, which TV moves super fast, so there's not a lot of room for mistakes or like grand ideas, but my claim to fame here is that I kind of, when you squinted your eyes, looked like the character Brittany, so I have my face all over her bedroom wall, along with my sister and some friends. So yeah, famous, made it. <laughs> So after that, the next cool job was, um, what is this? Uh, <laughs> stop motion animation, that's what this is called. Um, so we make everything from scratch, everybody has to be tiny, and you make all the sets, all the characters, all the props, all of the costumes, little guys. So I was part of the team that did all the sets, and so the production designer would give you a tiny napkin sketch, then I had to take it and make it a 3D digital world human scale for proportions, then shrink that down to puppet scale size, then take that into the workshop, sometimes 3D modeling it, and produce these very organic, ornate shapes that characters would be on. This, at the moment, is my only credit movie, and it's on Netflix, and it's called Hell and Back. Uh, my next big job was Disney Imagineering, and it was fantastic. Being a Disney kid growing up, loved Disneyland, so to come full circle and work on a park was just so exciting. So I worked in the Shanghai Disney Park in the Pirates of the Caribbean section, and I worked on the ride, and um, Disney had some setups where they had this new ride boasted new boat system. If you've been in the original Disneyland ride, this is the new updated one. 
So the boats have this fun path, and so we had like a boat system set up, and then they had the light projection system next to it in the next warehouse, so I just basically rode rides for the time I was at Disney. It was amazing. My next job took me across the country to Orlando, and I worked with a company where we did movie or like parks for um, all over the world, like Norway, China, the Middle East. And so here's me doing research at SeaWorld for a marine park in Oman to test out tank depths and sizes. And yeah, the great theme parks are fun. They're amazing. Everything is blue sky, so you don't have any limitations. But then for the most part, 99% of it doesn't get built. So I have a whole portfolio of stuff that you will never see. So anyway, so then Disney called me back. So I went back across to LA, and I worked on the wayfinding system for the Shanghai Park. So wayfinding is what you get people to move around in that directional information. So it was a lot different than doing creative fun stuff because it actually had to be relevant. So, um, <laughs> so after that contract wrapped though, um, LA was just not the place for me anymore. So I packed up my stuff and moved home to Edmonton. But I had this flashy resume of designing like helicopters for Zero Dark Thirty. So where would I fit in in Edmonton with my flashy resume? So I called around and I landed at Stantec and they gave me a job and I said, you've made the right choice. And now my days are spent modeling parks and working with landscape and working with transportation and community development. And it's great to finally see some stuff that I'm working on actually get made. So that's very satisfying. Thank you.